If you've flown enough, you'll eventually encounter a situation where your flight is delayed because of a no-show passenger. The accompanying announcement from the cockpit is that their bags will need to be located and offloaded from the aircraft. But apparently, this doesn't always have to happen. As we saw in the case of a Canadian couple hoping to travel from British Columbia, Canada to Ulaanbaatar, Mongolia. Indeed, the couple had their trip ruined due to a delayed flight followed by Air Canada's refusal to offload their bags to allow them to travel on the alternate itinerary. This meant that while the pair of travelers never went to Mongolia, their bags did. Let's look at this interesting series of events for today's video. As first highlighted by Global News, couple Paul Suter and Alyssa Yell had planned a horse trekking adventure in Mongolia in early September. The two travelers had booked fully refundable business class tickets through Turkish Airlines, a Star Alliance partner with Air Canada. The first leg of their three-flight trip was with Air Canada from Vancouver to Montreal. The plan would see them connect again in Istanbul before reaching their final destination, Ulaanbaatar. The troubles began when their first flight to Montreal was delayed. The couple said that they had received a notification on their phone stating that this was due to quote-unquote pilot scheduling issues. The delay would be particularly problematic for the travelers as they had to connect onwards to Istanbul, a connection that would not be made due to the delays. This would have a knock-on effect as the onward flight to Mongolia would also be missed, as would the beginning of their horse trekking adventure. Things seemed promising at first. With the help of an Air Canada agent, a recovery itinerary was created to allow Suta and Yell to arrive in Ulaanbaatar on time to start their trip. This new itinerary would see the travelers fly from Vancouver to Los Angeles, then onwards to Seoul, and then finally to Ulaanbaatar. The Air Canada agent instructed the pair to retrieve their bags at the domestic baggage claim area of Vancouver International so that they could recheck them for their flight to Los Angeles. Unfortunately, this is where the troubles escalated to the point of no return. The couple states that Air Canada employees at the baggage claim counter would not remove their bags from the original flight bound for Montreal. Apparently, the refusal was due to the airline wanting to get the aircraft off the ground and onwards to Montreal. Paul Souter told Global News, The agent basically said that they will not delay Flight 306 any longer to Montreal in order to get our bags off and they will not be removed. As the four bags checked in by Souter and Yell contained essential camping equipment that could not otherwise be purchased in time, it would have been impossible to continue with the horse trekking trip even if they had arrived in Ulaanbaatar on time. Thus, the pair decided to cancel their trip, telling the media, We know we can't replace the items that are flying across the country without us, without a great deal of time and effort to put everything that we would need for this trip together. Of the four checked bags, one remained in Vancouver, while the other three had a round-the-world trip to Mongolia and back. These bags arrived at the couple's home on Vancouver Island 24 days later, complete with tags and stickers indicating their luggage had flown to Mongolia. As for airfare compensation, Turkish Airlines refunded $8,000, while Air Canada provided the following – $800 for the delayed flight, $400 for each passenger, a 25% one-time use coupon for future travel with the carrier. $4,652.67 as compensation for missing luggage and $2,000 in Air Canada vouchers for future travel. All figures listed are in Canadian dollars. At the moment, when converted to US dollars, one Canadian dollar equates to approximately 74 cents. While the total cost of their flights has not been disclosed, it was noted that they had yet to receive a full refund for their flights at least at the time that the story was first published. An Air Canada spokesperson states the refund is taking longer as the itinerary was booked through another carrier. So, was there a safety violation? Most of us travellers are accustomed to the procedure of bags being offloaded when their owner is not on board the aircraft. Indeed, this tends to be the cabin announcement that causes the entire cabin to groan while ground crews frantically search for a bag. This procedure is known in the industry as positive passenger bag matching, 
or PPBM. Rather than being a customer-driven policy to ensure owners have their belongings, this is done as a safety precaution, particularly as it relates to terrorism. So, was Air Canada in violation of any safety procedures? Well, it's unclear, with these policies varying from country to country and not always being publicly available. Air Canada told Global News that it was in compliance with all security measures with regards to the incident and the baggage. Meanwhile, the website Clever Journey notes that PPBM tends to be more strictly enforced for international flights, and protocol may differ from country to country regarding domestic services. At the same time, the website notes that on occasion baggage has been known to travel internationally, even without their owners on board flights. So, what can we learn from this story? Whether it's crew scheduling or inclement weather, airline delays are sadly an inevitable part of air travel. Thus, they should always be planned for, both on the airline side and the passengers. In this specific situation, it's nice to know that an Air Canada agent swiftly rebooked the couple on an alternate itinerary, one that would allow them to get to their destination in time. Assuming airline partners and carriers within the same alliance are the priority, we would have to guess that the couple would have been flown to Los Angeles with either Air Canada or United and onwards to Seoul and Ulaanbaatar with South Korean carrier Asiana. The refusal to offload bags is unfortunate and disappointing, but also understandable. With the airline not knowing and also not needing to know the couple's specific circumstances, they have to make a calculated decision whether to further delay the flight for the sake of two passengers' baggage. This would also come at the cost of delaying it for hundreds more on board the aircraft. Though it depends on the flight's load factor, the busyness of ground staff and the size of the aircraft, offloading baggage could take another half hour to complete. Air Canada operates aircraft as small as the Airbus A220-300 between Vancouver and Montreal, but also aircraft as large as the Boeing 787-9, Airbus A330-300 and Boeing 777-300ER. Flightradar24.com data shows that Suter and Yell's baggage was loaded onto a Boeing 787-9. For Air Canada, this type is fitted with 298 seats. Not that the travelers did anything wrong, but the entire incident is an excellent reminder to allow for extra time when it comes to those extra important events at the final destination, when possible, of course. Whether it's a wedding, business meeting, or horse trekking adventure, it would be wise to book a flight to arrive a day or day and a half before the important event. This is especially true of multi-stop itineraries with longer international flights that only operate once daily. What do you think of this whole situation? Share your thoughts by leaving a comment. Simple Flying publishes over 150 articles every week. If you're looking for the latest aviation news and insights, visit simpleflying.com.